Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be fire part four. We're going to read Deuteronomy chapter seven. I don't think this is going to be a long one, but you never know with me. Uh, I, I know I'm long-winded and, you know, but... What can I tell you? All right, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. Talking to our ancestors. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, and the Hivites and Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Wow. The uh, modern church world says, no, send evangelists, marry them, love them, you know, but... What does the word of God say? Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. See, sadly, uh, Evidently, the Canaanites must have been very attractive women because they, Israel and Judah had ended up marrying. Well, Judah married, uh, I think, at least two Hittite women. And, uh, well, look at Samson. And, uh, you know, Israel did too. And I wonder, you know. Oh, well. All right, verse 4. And why, why not marry him? Well, in my playlist on the angels that sinned, Genesis 6, you can find out why. Verse 4, For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. You know, you kindle a fire, right? But thus shall... All right, so... Verse 5. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars. And their altars were uh, for satanic... You know, they're, they're dedicated to Satan. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images, their idols. Matter of fact, uh, the word in Greek for images is icon. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves. Uh, if you know anything about witchcraft, Wicca, W-I-C-C-A, or uh, one of the I forget if it's Old English or Middle English, but they used to spell Wicca, W-I-C-K-E. And if you put an, a D on the end, it turns into wicked. But uh, they talk about the craft, you know, and then they try to make you think that they're talking about making wicker baskets, you know, weaving, I don't know, palm fronds or whatever they use to make wicker baskets. I don't know what they use, you know, what is it, rattan, wicker, 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 I don't know. But uh, when they talk about the craft, they're not talking about baskets. They're talking about witchcraft, spells, potions, okay? I mean, and groves, you know, the uh, to, to witches, oak trees were sacred, not the creator of the oak trees, but the, but the creation. So it says, Ye shall 
destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves. Why? Why are you cutting down their groves of trees? Because they were dedicated to Satan. And it says, and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. Huh. Burn their images with fire. What's up with that? All right, let's take a look. Uh, the solution to items dedicated to the devil was fire. And let's face it, uh, God's got the lake of fire for the devil and his angels, right? Now, when I first came to the Lord, I took uh, inventory of all the junk in my house and uh, I started a fire and I burned them. And I didn't even know this stuff back then. It was, I guess it was kind of, well, I wouldn't say instinctive, but I, I guess the Lord uh, gave that to me. So, all right, we're going to go to Acts chapter 19. Uh, let's see. Acts 19 and verse 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews... Ooh. Now what's this deal about vagabond? Well, in Genesis 4, Cain had just killed Abel. And in verse 12, Genesis 4, 12, uh, Jesus, uh, God pronounced a curse upon Cain. He said, When thou tillest the ground... In other words, when you're farming, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Ooh, what people have always wandered all over the earth? Think about that. And Cain said unto the Lord, Oy vey, my punishment is greater than I can bear. I'm sorry. Uh, that's the Bob translation. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that anyone that findeth me shall slay me. Now, this, this uh, Cain could not grow anything it would plant you could plant it but uh, maybe it would grow but it wouldn't yield any fruit i don't know now what what group of people um encourage planting a tree for israel they have people fly over there presidents and dignitaries and congressmen and they plant trees for israel and they make a big thing about it. You know, photo opportunities. How come they want other people going over there and planting trees for them? Genesis chapter 4, anyone? A vagabond? Hmm. Let's go back to Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Shiva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Oh yeah. You ever wonder why they want to get rid of the name Jesus and, and, and use Yeshua HaMashiach? Well, maybe this is it. Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? So, they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Verse 17. 
And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. Now, Ephesus was the, uh, Paul wrote a book called Ephesians, and that's, that's what it was, the city in Greece called Ephesus. And um, their goddess was Diana. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't Wonder Woman, wasn't her name Diana? Uh, she's supposed to be some kind of a goddess, right? Um, yeah. All right, so they tried to, the Jews, the vagabond Jews tried to do an exorcism. And uh, they got beat up. And they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which had used curious arts. What's curious arts? Magic, people. Magic. Many of them also which used curious arts, arts brought their books together and burned them and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot of books, people. Here it is, the people at Ephesus, because they believed in Christ, took their magic books, brought them together, and burned them. Verse 20, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. All right, let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 5. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. You know what, uh, everybody? Chinese and India... China is about 1.5 billion, and India is about mm, a little over three quarters of a billion people. I think it's about 800,000, I'm sorry, 800 million people. I mean, it's like, almost, I think it's like three out of seven people in the world are either Chinese or, or India, from India. I mean... You know, whites are, uh, I think they're around 10 to 12 percent, maybe 8 percent. I don't know. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. All right, let's take a look at. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. What is guile? Uh, guile's like trickery. All right, guile. Uh, as a noun, it means cunning, deceit, usually in a bad sense. And then it's a transitive verb, to disguise craftily. So, it, you know, deceit. I mean, there you go. All right, so. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, 
disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up and uh, built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Somebody tell the Masonic Lodge, please. And the uh, those that want to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation. Now this is talking to Christians, believers, people. But ye are a chosen generation. And the modern church world can't handle this. No, 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 no. They want you to believe that the Antichrist are the chosen people. Really? The, uh, if you don't know what an Antichrist is, call your local sin a Gog. Call him. And uh, ask him if Jesus is the Christ. And then when they say, no, absolutely not, then look up in 1 John what the definition of an Antichrist is. But ye are a chosen generation. Chosen people, people. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people. Why were they not a people? Because in Jeremiah 3.8, it said that God divorced Israel. He gave, them, he gave them a bill of divorcement. And if you look in the book of Hosea, he says that in the place, well, we'll get to that. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. All right, let's go to Jeremiah, verse 3, uh, chapter 3, I'm sorry, chapter 3. Now, remember, Josiah was a good king. He was one of the last of the good kings. He was a great king. I mean, I'm looking forward to meeting him one day. Verse 6, Jeremiah 3 and verse 6, chapter 3 and verse 6. The Lord said, also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree. Remember the groves? Oh, yeah. She has gone up upon every high mountain. You ever wonder why the, the Tower of Babel was reaching up into heaven? Are they building the stairway to heaven? Trying to, you know... Uh, I don't know. That, that's what I, that's how, that's what I get. She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree and there hath played the harlot. What's a harlot? A whore. A whore. A spiritual whore. So what's up with these high mountains? Well, how about the book of John 
chapter 10. We're going to do just real quick. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up, climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And Jesus said, I am the door. Okay. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the peril, uh, know not the voice of strangers. All right, back to Jeremiah three. So, uh, Jeremiah three six, she has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said after she had done all these things. Turn thou unto me. God's pleading with Israel. Turn thou unto me. Come to me. Turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. See, Israel and Judah are sisters. They're not the same. They had different land areas. They had different kings. They had wars against each other. Israel's capital was Samaria. Judah's capital was Jerusalem. So when you get preachers that tell you that Israel is Judah and Judah is Israel, they're either liars or they ought to keep their mouths shut because they know nothing. But I think they're liars. Well, either way, they're liars, either knowingly or unknowingly. Turn thou unto me, but she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Listen carefully. And I saw when, for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. Verse 9. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly saith the Lord. Yeah, she was pretending she was pretending to love the Lord, but she didn't turn to the Lord with her whole heart. Verse 11. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Divorced Israel justified herself more than Judah. Now, why did God not divorce Judah if they were even worse than Israel? Well, because God made an, a promise to uh, King David that there would always be a man sitting upon his throne. And honestly, I honestly think that that has to be true. Um, there was, uh, let's face it, Christ was of the line of Judah, and he's a king. However, I wonder if there is still an earthly king on this earth of related to Judah. Honestly, I, you know, that's what I think. But uh, let's keep going. Verse 12, go and proclaim these words toward the north. Well, Israel was north of Judah. But also, what's north of Israel? Europe is, people. And what people built churches, printed Bibles, and worshiped Jesus, even though imperfectly? Well, Europe, and that's north. 
Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered the ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn thou, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors, not pastures of grass for sheep, no, no, pastors, like ministers, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, The ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of God, that's coming, people, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of of their evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, two different people, and they shall come together out of the land of the north, Europe, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. All right, let's take a look at the book of Hosea. Hosea is a wonderful book. Verse 1, Hosea 1.1. 1, 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. See, people? Israel and Judah had different kings. They're not the same people. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. See, that's what this is kind of symbolic of, you know, the Lord had a wife of whoredoms. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. You see, names in the Old Testament have a meaning. Call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And that was accomplished in the days of the Assyrian Empire. They conquered Israel and part of Judah. Verse 5. And it shall come to pass at the day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name Loruhamah, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. And that happened. Uh, the Assyrians came in, wiped out the army, and took everybody as slaves. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned Loruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Loamai, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Why? Because Jeremiah 3.8, divorced. Verse 10, 
Ah, but here it changes. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor number. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, Christ, and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. And people, I think this is going to be accomplished in the day of the marriage supper of the Lamb, but hey, what do I know? All right, um... Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. What people have the greatest, highest standard of living in the world? What country does all the South American countries and the African countries and the Asian countries what countries do they want to come to? Think about that. Where does everybody want to immigrate to? All these illegals. Verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people, but because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of Bauman from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. Ah. See, God keeps his covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. But, but, Chaplain Bob, that sounds like lordship salvation, is what they'll say in derision, like it's a curse coming from their teeth. In John 14, 15, Jesus said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. What commandments? The great commandments. Actually, everybody talks about the Ten Commandments, but no, it's the two commandments. Uh, I covered that in a previous study in Fire. Uh, Jesus said, you know, somebody asked him, well, what's the great commandment? He said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. I'm paraphrasing. He says, this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. On that hung all the law and the prophets. And that could be found in, that's in Matthew 22, from verse 36 to verse 40. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I don't, I don't read anything about Sabbath keeping there. Although I do think uh, honoring the Lord on the Sabbath and not working is a good idea. I think it's a great idea. Honestly, I do. But does it say, keep the Sabbath and thou shalt be saved? No. No, it doesn't. So, what does the Bible say about uh, keeping the commandments? 1 John 5, 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. 2 John 1, 6. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Revelation 12, 17. 
And the dragon was wroth, which means angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, the dragon's not going to be mad if you keep the commandments, as long as you don't have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 14, 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. But, but Chaplain Bob, that, that sounds like lordship salvation. Well, argue with Jesus. Argue with John. Don't argue with me. I'm just, I'm just the messenger. All right, let's go back. Deuteronomy 7, 9, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, verse 10, and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. Oh yeah, God's going to be in their face and destroy them. He will not be slack to them that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if, if, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy, mercy, which ye swear unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thy kine, K-I-N-E, that's Old English for cat, cattle, and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which ye swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. Isn't that what the white western nations were when it came to food? Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. You know, people, leprosy is was almost unknown in America until we started importing people from places like Haiti. Leprosy is, it's in Haiti. And, and they bring them over here and then we got leprosy in America. Not because it was among our people, but because we bring it over from these third world countries. Leprosy, it's in India a lot. But they don't talk about it. You know, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them. Neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare or a trap. For that will be a snare unto thee, if thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt well remember that the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. The great temptations which thine eye saw, and the signs, and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm, whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out, so shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them. You know, people, in Asia, in Japan, they've got giant hornets. 
And if you get stung by one and you don't get medical treatment, you die a lot of times. They're nasty. Re uh, Google Google Jap uh, giant Japanese hornets. They're they're evil. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from from thee be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you a mighty God, and terrible. And the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little, that thou uh, thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. And people, I don't think, when they talk about the beast of the field, I think they're talking about two-legged beasts of the field. Not necessarily four-legged, but uh, what can I tell you? Lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee, but the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. You know, people, uh, I, the Lord is not pleased that we're bringing all these heathen aliens into this country. Uh, you know, in 1966, Anton LaVey, his real name was Levy, he, he founded the Church of Satan in this country. You know, and they're not pleased that they're bringing Hindus into this country. And I don't think they're pleased with Muslims and, and sin a gogs either being built in this country that blaspheme Christ. I don't think the Lord, it's a curse, people, not a blessing. And they always say, oh, well, freedom of religion. That's not what it was intended to be. It was intended so Lutherans and Methodists uh, and everybody could, you know, uh, Congregationalists have freedom to worship in the way they find best, not, not mosques. I don't know. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed, and he shall deliver their kings into thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou have destroyed them. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God." Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house. No, people, you don't want to take something that was dedicated to Satan and bring it into your house. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing." This is the end of this Bible study. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, I pray, amen.